is a whole family of brand new armored combat vehicles. With a top speed of over 60 miles an hour, it can quickly transport infantry to critical battlefield positions. At Yakima Training Center in Washington State, I've come to see a pack of strikers in action. 4th Battalion, 9th Infantry will soon be deploying these vehicles in Iraq. So this training exercise will be vital in preparing them for war. This is the U.S. Army's first new military vehicle since the Abrams tank in the 1980s. And this exercise is going to involve more than 30 strikers, all set up to do different jobs, spread over several miles of front line. One striker acts as command and control, directing the soldiers in the field. Many of the others are used to transport the troops. But there is a whole range of other jobs that the striker can be adapted for. If you have a mission, the striker vehicle has a variant. When you need a big gun, look at the mobile gun system, MGS. This is the fire support vehicle, FSV. And this variant is the mortar carrier B. The fixed mortar fires through armored doors that swing open on the top of the striker. There's also a portable mortar on board that can act as a backup. I wanted to see it in action while I had the chance. Oh. Not nearly the range of a 155 artillery piece, but almost as much killing power. Right. That's fantastic. And people don't realize just how far you can reach out with these things. Yeah, it's not artillery, but you can reach out pretty far, make a huge difference in the battlefield. Watch how much the suspension rocks when they fire these things, too. Even the standard kit for the Striker is awesome. It's tooled up with an M2 machine gun and a Mark 19 grenade launcher. But when you're carrying the infantry's finest, the land warrior soldier, you need to be able to offer protection as well. That's why the striker is built to withstand small arms fire and artillery fragments. With all that military hardware, one single striker is a force to be reckoned with. But in packs, they're much more lethal. Like the land warrior soldiers they support, strikers are digitally networked so they can build an up-to-date picture of the battlefield. It has a digital capability that's integrated into the vehicle and integrated across the brigade. So when you're driving the vehicle, you can see where you are, where your friends are, and where the enemy is. That is a, a decisive edge. At the press of a button, the officer in the command striker can issue new orders. He can instantly, through the computer that hooks to the system, create a new set of operational graphics on a map, on a piece of imagery, and send them with a text message saying, hey, instead of turning left, turn right. The striker is fast and flexible, and that's why Colonel John Lear is so confident it's the right tool for the job. At all levels of war, tactical, operational, and strategic, it gives us extreme mobility. The tactical level, it can outmaneuver anything on the battlefield with uh, speeds in excess of 65 miles an hour safely. Uh, operational mobility, we can move it within theater on C-130 airframes. And obviously, uh, strategic level, moving it throughout the world on C-17s or other type of lifters, uh, we can get numerous of the striker vehicles due to the weight and the size on there and deploy them anywhere in the world. And there are plenty of strikers out there. The U.S. Army received the very first pre-production models in 2002 and was so impressed with the prototype's performance that it quickly ordered over 2,000 units. They're ready for action, and so am I. In combat, the soldier on the front line faces the greatest risk and needs every advantage he can get. I've seen how Land Warrior turns each man into an integrated part of the battlefield network. And the Striker Armored Combat Vehicle has already proven itself as fast, quiet, maneuverable, and smart. Now I'm going to see what happens when these two incredible systems start working together. More than 30 Striker units equipped with Land Warriors are going on a training exercise, and I'll be at the heart of the action. It's time to go to work. Their mission is to capture an enemy base. The strikers will spread out over several miles, 
but they don't know what surprises are in store. And I'm traveling in the Commander's Striker. Now, because of digital technology, you can extend the eyes and ears of the Commander in a way you never thought possible before. What are some of the big advantages you get with the Commander's vehicle? As opposed to other Strikers? Or to other I have more, I have more uh, communications and command and control equipment in this vehicle. Soldiers and strikers can talk by voice, text, or video link. Everyone from the bottom to the top has this ability and is kept up to date about what's happening. I know where I am, I know where the other folks are, and I can communicate that way via text messaging, essentially in formatted reports, and you can see where I'm at, and so forth. And I have other means, you know, digital radios, satellite comms, if necessary, that kind of thing. As the battalion crosses into a hostile area, the strikers scan the battlefield looking for trouble. When they spot it, they've got the tools to identify whether it's friend or foe and take action. My vehicle comes to a halt. The rest of the force unleashes its payload and the land warrior troops head for the frontline bunkers. Now, you've seen the digital battlefield. Let's see what it looks like. All right, we got tank targets up. Sometimes you just want to see what's going on. One. As this is just an exercise, I'm allowed onto the field to see how effective they are. If you look all the way around, you see the vehicles. They came in to support these guys. They're actually going in right over here and clearing the bunker right in front of us. Now you can hear there's some smoke going off, some other things simulating other contacts that we're actually taking. Now I can get a closer look at the trenches. It's here that the enemy has been holed up, but the land warrior troops have done their job. This is a real dangerous position for a soldier. You can have a full-on firefight in the space of someone's closet. Imagine, you walk into this position here, you don't know what's around the corner, and there's just tons of different little places, crevices that people can hide in. It's one of the scariest things ever, but you gotta be focused on what you're gonna get done. Good tactics and training at this point are the only thing that's gonna keep you alive. You come through here, you don't know what's around the corner, but you gotta make sure you're fine, you keep this train moving, and you've gotta impact this area. You've gotta intimidate, you've gotta own this space. And you can see right back there, all these different little positions they can fire out of, they can shoot out of. It's difficult, you have gotta be on top of this. In bunkers like these, the land warriors can keep everyone in the loop, feeding back critical data to the entire assault force. Every enemy movement is instantly streamed to anyone who needs it. The next arrival is yet another variant. This one is for medical support, and its job is to go into the battle zone and get the injured out fast. As you can see, there was a casualty coming through those trenches. Now, the beautiful thing about Strikers, there's so many variants, there's even the medical variant. Now you can bring a vehicle right on board, medevac and instantly get them out of here and get them to safety so they can treat him. Look how quickly they shift position and get ready to move out. Once that target is cleared out, you can see how quickly Striker can reposition itself and get ready to take off. Mission over. It's debrief time. They need to be thorough. With this battalion heading for Iraq, the next action they see will be a matter of life and death. But with this incredible technology to help them, these soldiers are better